if you look at his biography, author Feng Tang really is China's jack of all trades. Born in Beijing in the 1970s, he graduated with a university major in gynecological tumors, of all things. But after only a short time working in the medical profession, he switched to the business world after getting an MBA in the U.S. Years later, he took on another corporate challenge, managing a branch of one of China's most well-known state-owned enterprises. But throughout his career, writing has been his true passion. In his free time, he's churned out a whole series of novels. Give Me a Girl When I'm 18, that's one of them. Beijing, Beijing, another. And Like It, that's another. That's in addition to some of the provocative works, which even today haven't been published in Simplified Chinese on the Chinese mainland. His name is instantly recognizable to any Chinese urbanite, from teens to adults. Everyone has found something to love in his work. A crazy and dramatic reflection of their own lives in an ever-changing China. You describe yourself as audacious. What does this mean to be audacious as a writer in China? To me, being audacious, uh, number one, I just write as free as, as I want in terms of uh, content and also in terms of selection of work. Uh, selection of forms, both content and, uh, uh, and, and the format. Uh, number two, I uh, tend to not to follow uh, any social taboo uh, in my writing. Mm -hmm. uh, pay no attention to uh, the limitations of social norms. Number three, uh, I pay no attention uh, to the market response. I, pay very little attention to the sales number. So net net, I just write as freely as possible, regardless of anything. Is it really possible to do that? I think that's the rules uh, I try to follow. Of course, there, if you aim at uh, uh, getting 10, sometimes you'll get uh, 8 or 9. Uh, however, if you only aim at 6, uh, you won't pass the average. <laughs> so so what, how would you now describe yourself? Six, eight? I'm a aiming at ten. Uh, I'm working on uh, reaching ten, but uh, you know, it's, I'm not in a position to judge uh, my achievement so far, and, and I hope I can achieve uh, higher and better. Though Feng Tang is modest about his achievements, he was certainly keen to show me one of the places he loves and lives, a corner of a traditional courtyard in downtown Beijing, which he says was a private temple for one of the most powerful women in Chinese history, the Empress Cixi Dowager. He told me of all the legends surrounding the place while I nursed my teacup and admired his collection of antiques. Feng Tang told me that he really loves the contrasts between the ancient and the contemporary. It's such a gift to him as a writer. China is such an interesting place these days. Maybe the most intense place in the world. Yeah. What does that mean to you as a writer? I think I'm born in the right time. <laughs> I read people's daily and I watch CCTV. Full of goodies, isn't it? For writers full of interesting stuff, very interesting stuff. Sometimes even I use uh, my imagination. I cannot think things <laughs> could be this way. <laughs> Can so. you help me to understand how those stories, maybe on the paper, on TV, or through stories told by the others, yes. would eventually reflect it in some of your works? Does it really go that way? Yes, yes, okay. yes. For example, just give you one uh, uh, story just happened uh, uh, during uh, this lunch, I had lunch with, with my parents. Uh, my father was away. My mom was saying to me that, hey, uh, did you watch TV uh, last night? I, I, I told her many times, I don't have a TV at all. Uh, <laughs> did you watch TV last night? Uh, saying in Jiangsu province, uh, there are a huge number of ducks uh, were dead, uh, uh, not naturally, just with certain disease or poison. 
Then uh, just at this time, my uh, my father came in saying uh, with a duck, uh, saying it's extremely cheap. I don't know what's going on, but I, I, I like the price. I just bought one. So this, you know, this is uh, that thing cannot happen. Just little things, but coincidences. Yes. The drama yes. has always yes. been there yes. in yes. life. Yes. 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 Too many to choose from. Yes. 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 How would you streamline them as a writer? Uh, the ones came into my mind first. Usually, what kind? Usually, with strong contrast, or usually uh, something with a strange sense of humor. Just as the one I just described to you, uh, you can imagine you satirical know, a little bit. Yes, you can imagine uh, what uh, what in my mom's uh, heart uh, when he uh, saw my father came in with a stupid duck. I always you. What did you do with that duck? I didn't eat anything. <laughs> That's interesting. Talk mm. about language. Yes. In your in your books, you use some mm. very interesting combination. Yes. Of Chinese language, with a modern kick,、mm. while at the same time combining、mm. some of the minor elements of the elegance of the ancient Chinese languages. Yes, it probably has a lot to do with your upbringing and your reading history. But what is the language to you as a writer, as a Chinese writer, contemporary? Yeah. Yeah. Here, I could be.、Uh, I could be too firm, but、uh, I strongly believe Chinese language、uh, is the most beautiful thing, not one of, is the most beautiful thing man ever made, human being ever made.、Uh, is full of depths, full of flexibility,、uh, and full of. Uh, uh, The possibility. So it's sometimes what I mean by full of possibility is,、uh, you always feel the limitation of one, lang one language, even in Chinese. But on the other hand,、uh, if you know Chinese as a language better,、uh, you will find out it can create things that larger than your imagination,、mm -hmm. richer than your original thinking. Do you play with that a lot? Yes. Yes. For example.、Uh, Uh, the name of uh, uh, the towns and the cities.、Uh, give you one example in Shandong. They call it Xixia. Is、uh, you know live with、uh, all the rainbows, living with the colorful cloud.、Mm -hmm. So there's many things、uh, in the Chinese language that、uh, are extremely beautiful, extremely warm. Sometimes can be extremely deep. Are we as creative as we were before?、Nope. Or actually, we have so much left behind our ancestors. No, I, I think we,、uh, as a as a whole,、uh, we haven't really digested、uh, what our ancest、uh, ancestors、uh, left us. What does it take to digest? Reading, reciting, read more books. My thinking maybe still very traditional. I still think it's like a Kunlun Mountains. You need to go to the top of Kunlun Mountain and grow your own plant on the top of Kunlun Mountain. There's a Consequence. That's just a sequence of that.、Mm -hmm. You go to the、uh, to the top, then you grow your own things. Right. So you learn before you can really create.、Uh, but on the other hand, I agree.、Uh, some extremely young artists, some extremely young businessmen, they can create something extremely beautiful.、Uh, so that's. I think we can combine this, these two together. Song Tang enjoys talking about China's history and his own personal history, particularly some of the most dramatic episodes. He belongs to the generation born in the 1970s, right in the midst of China's Cultural Revolution. But he's lived through a period of huge change in China as the economy blossomed and the country opened up to the outside world, from rags to riches overnight. It could be intense and very confusing. What is the personality, if there is any, of this generation? 
and in your writing, how is it reflecting it? Or not at all, you want to be as far away from this generation as possible. I think the 70s, born in the 70s people, in general, are more commercial driven, which means uh, more, in more accurate ways, more market driven. Uh, you know, when we grow up, uh, there was no market-driven economy, there's more planning economy. Uh, then suddenly, uh, we had all the opportunities uh, to go for market. Then it's, it's, it's totally new to our previous generation, to our fathers, mothers, parents. Uh, they always believe that there's only one way to go, which is study hard, uh, join good company or do and start up your own company, uh, earn more money. So this, the whole country is more market driven. I just maybe for the first time in the whole history. So we are uh, the generation for the money. Mm -hmm. uh, money in a good way, not in a bad way. It's what do you mean in, in a good way? Uh, in a good way is getting rich in a legal bonding uh, way, not just uh, money is everything. Just we are so poor at that, at that time, uh, as a society, mm -hmm. as a generation, we need to get rich, we need to get a decent life. So that's uh, very overarching uh, for a long time. So under this condition, uh, my generation is quite shy from uh, having real hobbies. However, it's, again, it's humanity, uh, real hobby, can never be forgotten as your uh, real love. Real right? hobby, what? What kind of real hobbies? For example, writing. So there's certain things that is more important than just being rich and being financially safe. That's right, that's right. But on the other hand, how would you compare your generation's writer, mm. for example, mm. you and your friends, mm. with the other generation, the 60s, the 50s, and then, of mm. course, the 80s and 90s, mm. which are very self-expressive mm. these days yes. in the Chinese society? Yes. I think my generation's uh, my generation writer is is quite unique in the way that I just described. Uh, at the very early part of their uh, their life, they go for uh, financial uh, safety. They go for uh, good jobs, good income, uh, houses, uh, taking care of the children and parents. Uh, so. Uh, the smartest people, the smartest people of my generation, uh, they are not writers when they are very young. Uh, however, the, the good part of that is they have real world experience. Right. So they, they know uh, how it feels uh, to lead an army of 10,000 people. Right. Uh, I mean, in a, in a commercial organization, right. they know uh, the world. Normally they study abroad, normally they get degrees uh, both in China and also in US or UK. Uh, Sometimes they study uh, literature uh, uh, outside, outside of China. So they're, in terms of knowledge base, uh, they're very solid. Uh, they don't have uh, the burden of uh, you know, cultural revolution. Uh, also they uh, do not have uh, the limitation of only study, uh, uh, only studying in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So this, they are better writer in terms of experience and knowledge. Are you going to say this to the 80s and 90s generation directly? Yes, yes. What do you think yeah. about them? They have more freedom than we do. Newer generation, they do have the freedom to choose different way of life, mm -hmm. different way of career. Uh, However, their uh, potential risk compared to my generation is their time is too fragmented. They have too many attractions. Even looking at this stupid screen, you, you, they have a smartphone. At that time, they don't even have a computer. Right. So uh, my impression is my generation tend to read books more, tend to uh, be more stable in one career. For example, at least work for three to five years. Mm -hmm. uh, do not change jobs that often. Uh, if we open a book, 
uh, we finish the book. If we write a uh, start, write ch chapter one, uh, we finish writing the whole book. There's a sense of superiority in your yeah. language, I think, yes. that I just yes. heard. Yes. Why is that? Yes. Because I think uh, writing and uh, reading, they are, they are bonded together. Mm -hmm. And you need to uh, substantial accumulation of reading and writing to become a master of it. Uh, there's to me, there's no uh, no bypass, no uh, no sh uh, no shortcut. Insights, <laughs> insights. <laughs> only the real stuff. Yes, if we don't have insight, I just stop writing. Have you realized that in some of your answer, there's a sense of uh, reminiscence already? Is, is it because it? of mm. age, or is it because you think it's really the most important part of your life? Because I'm already 44. So what? <laughs> According to the United Nations standard, you are still the young generation. Uh, I, like to, I like to compare uh, things. For example, uh, my feelings, my impressions, my understandings when I was very young. And my understanding, the same set of things uh, I'm having now. Were those days the most beautiful days of your life? No, I don't think so. I think every, uh, every single stage of life uh, is unique. Uh, what I'm doing is, you know, I read uh, Chinese history extensively. I like to compare. It's more like in this large scale time dimension, you'll find the essence of humanity. Mm. So this, you know, as, as a thinker, as a writer, you always try to compare, try to think about what's the difference, what's the commonality among things, among people, among different dynasties. So that's what I generally do. We talk a lot about your past works, your aspirations. Mm. What's next? If that is a question that I could ask. What are the things you are extremely interested in now that you think might be interesting for us to know as well? Yeah, majority of my literature uh, heroes are already died around my age, like Jack Kerouac, uh, like uh, D.H. Lawrence. Shall I say congratulations to you yes, that you yes. are still alive? Yes. Thank and, you very uh, much, thank you very much. Kicking and... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, I guess I will have less expectation of life. I just want to uh, let life take its own courses. I will still keep on reading, keep on writing, keep on understanding this whole world, keep on uh, getting insights and get them out in writing. It's a great pleasure to have you, Feng Tang, on World Insight. I'm sure you're providing many of the insights that our viewers are interested in. Thank you so much. All the best. Same thing here. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much. That is an exclusive we had with a Chinese contemporary writer, Feng Tang. Too many choices, according to him, that's not just a problem confronting Chinese writers born in the 1990s, but also many of us here in China. But will we make the right choices? Will we make our choices by listening to our hearts? Those are certainly important questions to be asked. As to the choices that Feng Tang made recently, he had one of his earlier novels entitled Beijing, Beijing, translated into English, and another, Ever Since We Love, made into a movie. It's his ambition now to make his works more widely known than ever before.